When I was younger, so much younger than today, I never needed anyone's help in any way. But now these days are gone and I'm not so self-assured. And now I find I've changed my mind and opened up the doors. <laughs> there you go. Hey, I've got caught somebody. Where did, oh, the older members of the audience, and I'm sorry, know where that comes from, right? What? The Beatles. It's helped by the Beatles, right? I thought this morning as the kids were coming up that I would talk to them about being a broken record. Right? Because that's what that is, right? When they ask you over and over and over again for something, it's like a skipping needle on a record player. But how many of them have ever seen a record? (laughs) Let alone know what one is. I mean, it's how does that work? Today's lessons are interesting, or at least I find them interesting. We have the story of Jacob who sends his family across the river and then wrestles with somebody who he finally at the end says, tell me what your name is. And the person, the person, whoever he's wrestling with says, Why do you have to ask my name? We have a reading in Timothy that talks about being persistent and standing up for what we know God has told us to do and to live that out. And then we have this wonderful gospel reading about this unjust judge in the parable that Jesus tells us about this unjust judge and a widow. And what do we do when we come across parables from Jesus? We try to read them and understand who is who in the story, right? So, God has to be somebody in this story. Is he the widow or is he the judge? I heard one answer over here, very, very quietly, very quietly. Is God the widow? Or is God the unjust judge? Ah, that, there's another quiet answer. Those people in the back can't hear you when you talk that low. I'm going to run over there with my mic so they can't hear you. Over here, and when you didn't hear from over in the choir, was neither. And what you didn't hear from the front pew was both. Does God have to be in the parable? And what are we really supposed to get from this? See, this is really confusing to me because really when you read this, it compares God to this unjust judge because it says that listen to what the unjust judge says and will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night. Is God like an unjust judge? And this judge doesn't fear God and he doesn't fear man and he does things only for himself. And he says that I'm going to give in to this woman because this woman keeps bothering me. I will grant her justice so she may not wear me out. The word there is actually physically beat me down so that she will not come and give me a black eye. So she will not come and make me look like a fool in front of other people. Is that the way God wants us to be? That we constantly have to come to him and ask him for things until he relents and gives in. And would God actually do that? Would God actually do that? Confirmation kids should know the answer to this question because we just talked about this in our last lesson. Would God relent and give in if somebody asked him to continually do something? There's this story in the Old Testament, in the story of Abraham. It's chapters, Genesis chapters 11 through 25. It's a great story. You should read it sometimes. It sounds like a lot, but it's not really. It's a really short read. But in this story, there's a story about God going to destroy Sodom. You know, you all know that? God destroys Sodom, right? Lot and his wife are in Sodom. And God is going to destroy it. And what happens? The angels go to visit Abraham. They leave Abraham and they go on to to Sodom because they're going to destroy Sodom. And Abraham says to God, if you find 50 righteous people, 
will you still destroy the city? And God says, no, if I find 50, I won't destroy the city. And Abraham says, well, forgive me, God, for, for coming to you again. But if you find just 45, what if five are missing? Will you still destroy the city if, if only five of the, of the righteous you needed to find to have 50? Would, would, what would happen? And he goes, no, for 45, I will not destroy the city. And, and Abraham goes, well, wait, not God, just one more second. I'm sorry to interrupt, but what about 40? God says, okay, for 40. And Abraham goes, well, what about 30? And, and the first thought is, is really, Abraham, you're bargaining with God. But actually, if you read that story all the way through, Abraham gets God to commit to not destroying Sodom if he finds 50 righteous people. He gets God whittled down all the way to 10 by the end of that story. So can we bargain with God? Can we be persistent and ask God to give us the things that we want? I'm not going to answer that question. Because I think that opens up a whole other can of worms. Because this story is about us being persistent. The story is about us being persistent to the one who's going to help us. Because you see, that's the very first part of this lesson from Jesus. Jesus told them about a parable about their need to pray and not to lose heart. Because that's exactly where our psalm comes from. The psalmist tells us that he's lifting his eyes up to the hills and he asks the question, where is my help going to come from? Why is he looking to the hills? There's some thought that the psalmist here, the person who ever wrote this, we don't think it's David, but whoever it was, was in a valley and was possibly going to... To be moving up into the hills. And when he looked up in the hills, he saw enemies coming his way. So he looks up into the hills and he see it and he asks, where is my help going to come from? And the answer should always be verse two. If you don't know what it is, you can look at it. You can cheat. Right. Where is my help going to come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. For he will be my shade. He will be my protection. He's not going to let me be moved. And he's not going to fall asleep on me. He's always going to be there. He's always going to protect me. No matter what happens, no matter what comes. God is going to be our help. And we can persevere. By staying in the wrestling match and following through on everything he's called us to do and knowing that no matter what trouble might assail us or what might come our way, that God is always going to be that entity that is going to give us help and is going to see us through if we can only be persistent because God will be quick To those who cry out to him day and night. He will quickly grant justice to his children. Not because of who we are. But because of whose we are. Not because of what we've done. But because of what he's done. You can always trust on God. And now my life has changed in oh so many ways. My independence seems to vanish in the haze. But every now and then I feel so insecure. I know that I just need you like I've never done before. God will always be there to help us. In every situation. In everything we go through. So cry out to him. And know that he will always be your help.